Assassins versus Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Which is better? Explained. That's the premise of today's video. We'll be covering story, gameplay mechanics, open world, context, and controversy surrounding both titles. I think it's quite an interesting conversation to have because I feel it's a unique situation within gaming. On one hand, you've got a beloved pirate game which does things and does them so well. And on the other hand, you've got a pirate game made by the same company years later that somehow did a much worse job than they had done 10 years before. To get started, we'll talk about game mechanics in Black Flag and Skull and Bones and we'll move from there. But before we do that, if you are new to this channel, The Exile, and want to stay up to date with everything Assassin's Creed, other titles related, then feel free to press the subscribe button so you don't miss a video from me. On top of that, if you really, really enjoy this video, you can hit the like button. Okay, let's go. So Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, released in 2013, has all the naval combat and exploration gameplay mechanics that Skull and Bones has, but many people are saying it's much better in a game 10 years older than the newer one. Now, when it comes to naval gameplay specifically, Black Flag has it all. Controlling the boat is quite simple, quite easy. It doesn't feel too light, doesn't feel too heavy. It, it's grounded. On top of that, you got your sea shanties. Exploration feels, dare I say, fluid. <laughs> pardon the pun. And when it comes to naval combat in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, Ubisoft's developed an intricate and fleshed out system. Now let's take a look at Skull and Bones. Everything I said about the gameplay mechanics in Assassin's Creed Black Flag when it comes to naval combat are present in Skull and Bones, but it's completely dumbed down, it is much harder to operate, especially in combat, and overall it really does just feel like a lesser experience. It's weird. For instance, take a look at the combat I'm showing on screen now of Black Flag. Now I'm going to put this side by side with Skull and Bones. In Black Flag, when you aim your cannons, you can see your direct approach, where that cannon is likely going to go. You're also very oriented when aiming your cannon to the reference of your ship. Now, when it comes to Skull and Bones, when you aim your cannons, it does this weird zoom in sort of animation and you can barely see sort of where you're aiming, where it's gonna go. And clearly, if you just look right there, you can see that it's a much more sound and visually appealing and engaging mechanic in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Now, you might be asking the question, well, why are gameplay mechanics in Skull and Bones worse than the game Ubisoft made 10 years before? And I think I've got the answer, but I'm gonna save that to the end of the video after we've sort of compared. Moving on, in Skull and Bones, something that's kind of a neat addition is you can take out these small raft type boats and, and build your way from there, collect resources, hunt sharks, for example. And this is a separate gameplay mechanic to your warships, for example. On the surface of the ocean, no, shut the fuck up. On the surface can feel quite engaging. You have this uneasy feeling knowing that a shark can attack your raft at any time and you've got to be ready to harpoon it to kill it. I'm going to try and give Skull and Bone some praise here and there where it can get it. But compared to Assassin's Creed Black Flag, again, it's night and day with the, with the quality. Again, that feels great and it looks decent for the sort of game it is. But again, if you compare it to Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, Edward Kenway can also hunt animals, but not just on a raft. He can do it underwater. He can do it on an island. Again, it's everything Skull and Bones can do, but just done with a lot more variation and with much more emphasis on actual quality. You can actually dismount your ship in Skull and Bones and traverse the world on foot. You can speak to innkeeps, you can speak to merchants. Again, very refreshing. It's a nice pace changer from your actual naval battles and exploring on ship. It switches up the gameplay loop a little bit and it sort of intertwines with the exploration on ship and collecting resources because then you can sell them on land and it all ties them together. Great. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag does this all and does it well. In Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, you can dismount your ship onto any island you see and explore it and hunt animals and figure out treasures that are on there and everything like that. Now, Skull and Bones doesn't let you explore every single island. It's very set locations with set paths that you can sort of follow, but, but that's how it is and, and you can't break off and go exactly where you want on foot. And I get it, that's the sort of game they were going for. They wanted it to be more focused on specific pirate things, whereas Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is mainly focused on an Assassin's Creed story, which takes place in cities. 
and naval combat and exploration in Black Flag, again, is surrounded by the context of Assassin's Creed. So, partly you can understand why Skull and Bones would do things differently, but the part that I don't understand is, again, why it can't do it at least the same as, but if not better, than a game they made 10 years ago. Now, one thing I do want to mention, when I played Skull and Bones, it was much more closer to release, and when the game came out, it was always online. It was online only. Now, I can't really attest to that now going into 2025, because it's been quite a few months since I've played the game. They may have updated it so you can play offline now, maybe you can let me know in the comments, but one thing I do know for sure is that Assassin's Creed Black Flag doesn't have to be relied on when it comes to internet connection. You've got the game downloaded or you have the disc, you play the game. That's not a massive difference, but you know, if you're someone who has a lesser internet connection where you live, or maybe you've got a Steam Deck, for example, you travel a lot, you wanna play on the go, then yeah, you're gonna be looking towards the offline only option more than you are in an always online type of service. Now, I think it's time we delve into the conversation of why these games are meant to be so similar but quality just doesn't match up. It's especially crazy seeing that Ubisoft deemed Skull and Bones its first, or the world's first, quadruple A game. Now that's clearly not the case, because I mean, look at it, play it, and you'll feel that it plays more like a double A game than a triple A. Skull and Bones versus Assassin's Creed really feels like you're comparing a Bruh. Ford Fiesta to Bruh. a Lamborghini, and I'm sure you can guess which is which. For those of you that don't know, Skull and Bones was pretty much in development hell for almost 10 years. After the successful release of Assassin's Creed Black Flag and the commercial success, Ubisoft saw that pirate games or pirate themed games sell. So Ubisoft greenlit Skull and Bones, their flagship pirate game. That was back in around 2014. The game didn't release until 2024. Now, I think that explains a lot of where the lack of quality is in Skull and Bones. When games get stuck in development limbo or development hell, they can often go through many changes of staff within the company. Ideas, visions for the game can change over the changing and transitions of different staff and employees working on the game. The longer you develop a game, the more rise you have to conflicting ideas and visions between different employees and developers. And on top of all that, imagine you are so done with a game because you've been working on it for 10 years, you're making other great games. It's going to get to the point where you just feel stagnated. Is that the word? It just doesn't feel like it's going anywhere as a developer and you probably lose passion in the development of the game. And it that's what Skull and Bones feels like to me. A game with no passion, a game with no drive, no competitive edge. Assassin's Creed reference. In stark contrast, Assassin's Creed Black Flag feels like it was made with pure passion when it comes to writing, but most importantly, when it comes to the naval exploration and the naval combat. It just, it works. It just works, Todd, it just works. And if I'm just gonna put it in layman's terms, it just doesn't work when it comes to Skull and Bones. One thing important to mention is Skull and Bones was developed primarily by Ubisoft Singapore. Now, Ubisoft allegedly partnered up with the Singaporean government, where I assume the government gave them, you know, a large grant, a large sum of money to make the best game as they can. And in turn, it's Ubisoft Singapore that released the game. It looks good for their country, I guess. And maybe that's why they made the deal. Anyway, this deal was, I guess, allegedly set in stone. So when Ubisoft keep delaying the game over and over, I think it's likely that they would have just cancelled it, to be honest. But with the Ubisoft and Singapore government deal, I don't think they were legally allowed to cancel the game. I think they were probably legally obligated to release the game because they got given money to make the game. Again, allegedly, I say allegedly because we don't know all the information. It's sort of tip from different employees at the time and leaks and rumors that suggest this. I'm not gonna come out and say this is what happened. It's, it's alleged. So yeah, development hell with delays along with an alleged illegal agreement to get the game out of the door by the Singapore government, Ubisoft had to release Skull and Bones. I think it got to the point after delay, after delay, after delay, where they thought, F it, let's just get this shit done. You know when you've got like a shit ton of homework to do and you just really can't be bothered to do it, you've got better things to do, you leave it all to the last minute and then when it's due the next day, you're like, oh, f 
I've got to get this done. So you rush all of it at midnight, you get it in at 8am the next day, and it's shit. It's clear that you didn't listen, you didn't revise, you ruined it, you get like a D minus on your homework. That's skull and bones, in my opinion. That's what I believe happened. Something like that. They just rushed it. They got out of the door after doing basically no work for years and years and delaying it. And here we are with a shoddy product, which again, pales in comparison to a game the same company made 11 years before. Now, on top of all of that that I just mentioned, I don't have a source for this, so take this as, I guess, conjecture. This is based off of what I read online months ago, so I could be slightly wrong, but I think it's an interesting tidbit of information or speculation. Apparently, during development of Skull and Bones in Ubisoft Singapore, there was a real lack of communication with development leads and developer employees of the game. So what they ended up doing is a lot of the time just watching YouTube videos and hanging out during the day, having no idea what they were meant to be doing. Now, if that doesn't scream development hell and a failed project and definitely the opposite of quadruple A, I wouldn't do that because that's double, but quadruple A, then I don't know what does. Again, I just read that somewhere and I'm remembering it from months ago. So again, take it as conjecture, but still like the sentiment of that in itself is insane. It's, it's wild. So look, if you came to this video hoping to find out which pirate game to play, Skull and Bones, or Assassin's Creed Black Flag, all I can really recommend to you is Assassin's Creed Black Flag. There may be things that you can take and enjoy from Skull and Bones, I'm not going to take that away from you, but from my personal experience playing both games, yes, I played a lot less of Skull and Bones than I did AC Black Flag, but there's a reason for that. I played Skull and Bones and I thought it was just awful. It felt like one of those free mobile games plastered with ads you get on your iPhone or Android. It really just didn't feel professional. And I won't lie, there are a few aspects, you know, gameplay mechanics, gameplay systems within Skull and Bones that are fine, you know, they're passable at the very least, such as the hunting, the in-game systems such as buying and selling resources, that sort of thing. Again, it's passable, but if you're gonna pay $60 for a game, you know, why should you settle for just passable when you could actually settle for a very well-rounded good game from the same company that is probably on sale for like $10 or something? I'm sure you can find it cheap somewhere. I think I'll just end off this video with a question for you. Did you play Skull and Bones when it came out and what did you think? Did you think it was a great game or did you think it was, you know, pretty embarrassing for Ubisoft? In contrast to that question, did you play AC Black Flag and what's your favourite memory with the game? What game would you suggest a friend to play? Skull and Bones or Black Flag? Let me know in the comments, we'll get a conversation going and build that AC community. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to press the subscribe button to see more just like this and press the like button to let me know you want to see more just like this. If you want to support me, you can become a member of my channel today for $4.99 a month. My Twitter is linked in the description. I love you guys, mate, the father of understanding guidance. I will see you soon. I'm now going to go and play some uh, some AC Black Flag. Why not? I, I, lo I love that shit. Let's, let's just... Uh. My dick, my dick.